Richard, morning. It's you. good to see you live. Yes, it's good to be alive. Susanna and I, our infamous night out at Soho House, you were there. Yeah, we ended there. up in a gay bar at 4 a.m. and it was just the three of us. Yeah. Um, it was a great night. And then, the, yeah. and then this yeah. happens to you. And, yeah. you know, jokes aside, this yeah. was a very serious thing that could have killed you. Yeah. You were just getting a plane from LA. Tell us what happened. Yeah, um, I was, uh, I basically, it was bad luck. I breathed something in. And the, the working theory that never really worked out what it was exactly is that I got on a plane at the wrong time and the pressurised cabin caused this infection in both of my lungs to explode everywhere. And then I did something... Oh, I love that picture. That's my wife's hand on my hand Aww, just as I was yeah. going under. As they were putting me in the coma, she rubbed my feet and she said, don't walk towards the white lights, <gasps> was the last which I think was a joke, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm. But when I got off the plane, I couldn't breathe properly and I did something really stupid, which is... I believed that because I go to the gym a lot, I'd kind of be fine. You were going twice a day, I was going you? twice a day to the gym. Mm. And obviously, working on your biceps has no impact on what's going on no. in your lungs. And so I left it 18 hours, and when I got to A&E, that's when it, it all kicked off. And you what? were put in a coma? Yeah. For nine... I mean, I, I suddenly heard... Someone said, emailed me saying, I think it was Gary Lineker, said, have you heard about Richard Bacon? Yeah. I said, is he all right? I said, what are you talking about? I've emailed your wife and then suddenly you realised that we were in a full drama mm. with yeah. our mate that you may not have come through. Yeah, I was very, very close to death. Uh, they went from telling me that I needed to be in an induced coma to being in a coma in four minutes. And as they said to me afterwards, when I went back several weeks after it happened, they said, it wasn't that you might die, we expected you to die. I was the illest person in, in Lewisham Hospital. Oh and God. so... And you're married with two little children. I was married children. with two little kids, yeah. How old are the children now? Uh, they are, Ivy is four and Arthur is six. Oh my what, did you have any, in that coma period, do you have any memory of anything? Do you have the, it's it... a good question, I get that a lot, which is, yeah. uh, you're not in any way conscious, but afterwards, doctors would come into the room and I would recognise their voices from right. the coma. So they would talk and I'd say, oh, that was you, you're one of the people. So when people are in long-term yeah. comas and, pe and family members... Their hearing members still talk. works. Yeah, some stuff seeps through, right. basically, mm. yeah. Oh, that was Arthur and Ivy, but yes, stuff gets through. Once you realise you were alive... Yeah and you'd come through this, and then you realised actually what you'd come through. Yeah. What was that moment like? It was the, one of the hardest moments, there are two hard moments, coming out of a coma, coming out of the coma was the worst day of my life. So being told I needed to go into the induced coma was the most shocking moment, and coming out was, was the worst day because you hallucinate and it takes about 14 mm. hours to come out truly. I, I, I felt very bad for Rebecca because for me, I found out afterwards how close I'd come. There was one point where they had the crash equipment hovering over me, my body turned blue, and they, were, they expected that there was a moment when they believed I was going to die. She'd been given that impression. And so I find out afterwards, and it's sort of a story, but for her, it was phoned by the bed, waiting every second mm. for that call to come in, saying that her husband had died. Absolutely You've shocking. You've given up alcohol. Uh, Look, we can I would still... find that almost more shocking than going into an induced coma. Let, let, listen, we can still go to a gay bar in Soho <laughs> till 4am, Piers. It's just that I'll be drinking lots of this. Uh, how, how are you feeling, generally? I feel good. It's, I feel really good. Uh, it, it's six months full of recovery, cos they pumped so many different drugs Which into hospital you. were you in? It was in Lewisham. And uh, Lewisham, it, at one stage, yes. almost didn't exist. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm really glad you mentioned that, because there's no question that hospital saved my life. There is no question that the NHS saved my life. In 2012, Jeremy Hunt tried to close it down, and the lead consultant... That was me leaving the hospital. I had to learn to walk again. The, the, the lead consultant said to me, if they had succeeded in closing that down, um, the next A&E would have been too far away, and you would have died. Wow. Uh, and if you, also, if you think about the problems that South London has at the moment with violence, the idea that they should have one less hospital, it's obviously mm. ridiculous. So uh, Jeremy Hunt is... Well, nearly would have been responsible for you dying. Yeah. Yeah. You should get a medal for that, really, shouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. your journalistic... What other... <laughs> like, <laughs> finding the... Well, I knew, I knew I know. how ill you were. You, <laughs> you suddenly weren't tweeting about Brexit and Donald Trump. I know. <laughs> that, was other, so that was the other... That was the other big night shit. that we had out was in New York on the night that Trump got elected. The day after yeah. Trump got elected, we had a night where... Uh, and I'd also... You were very smug. And I remember I embarrassingly gave you a lecture about you polls. Yeah. Yeah. You actually uh, called me son. He said, one day I'll tell you how American polling works, son. And, and I'll two, tell you who two was days before the election, you it, assumed Hillary it, was going to exactly win. Exactly what I did. Mate, um, it's great to see you. Yeah, it's great to be here. And, uh, you Can I just make one other very quick yeah. point about intensive care, which is um, I, I've been speaking to people that run intensive care. There are not enough beds in the UK and there's not enough funding. And two thirds of intensive care units in the UK are closing beds 
and people in intensive care are the sickest mm. people in the country, and there needs to be, I believe, a review yep. by the government to put more money... Wholeheartedly in. endorse well, that. Well, hopefully one of the Brexit dividends we will be a huge something. amount we of money going into the NHS.